Okay, gentlemen, we both received your instruction in your dressing room. Okay, both trunks are high. Right here is good. Right here is good. I want a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Above all, protect yourself at all times. Let's go. Drea later, Alvarez made it seem simple when we asked him what the game plan is, what strategy to employ to come up with a win tonight against Joe Smith. He said, you beat Smith by boxing him, working behind straight shots. Feels like he's got the better jab, that he's quicker, and he moves better. Is it that easy? It's not that easy, especially against Joe Smith. I mean, stop, 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 you know, stop, stop, Mark Ramsey stop. said that go. Joe Smith is, is, is a one-trick pony. He's a, he's a guy who has one style. But the only problem with that line of thinking is that what Joe Smith does, he does very, very well. I'm less concerned about what Joe Smith does, and I want to see what Alvarez does. He can have a game plan on paper, let your hands stop, go stop. box. All of that sounds good in theory, but is he going to execute? Is he going to do it? I mean, Smith Jr. has a style and a work rate needed to compete or even beat Alvarez. I mean, timing can beat speed, concentration, and fundamentals can beat power. Stop, stop, and smart stop. pressure can beat great counterpunchers. Yeah, and Alvarez is a smart, smart counterpuncher. Right hand from Alvarez behind the stop, jab. Stop, stop. See, the one thing that happened right there was Smith Jr. just sat right there at mid-range and didn't fire any punches. He didn't throw any jab or anything. And so what did Alvarez do? He stop, lined him up stop, for the jab and the right hand over the top. Smith Jr. trying to get around the guard of Alvarez. See, and that right there is what Smith needs to do. He needs to be physical in the inside and rough up stop, Alvarez stop. and make it very uncomfortable for him. Yeah, Smith can be physical, but he better realize that Alvarez is throwing punches back because the sequence that I just saw a few seconds ago on the ropes, Joe Smith had no regard that he later Alvarez is going to throw anything back. And in this first round in this fight, Alvarez looks alert and he's letting his hands go. Joe doesn't want to walk into a Stop. right hand. I was just going to say that, Dre, the right hand of Smith is deadly and the right hand of Alvarez is deadly. So when these guys throw their right hand, both these guys need to make sure that they keep their head off the line or get their head off to the line. And if, the way you do that is when you throw your right hand, so, you want to lean your head to the left to avoid the right hand coming from your opponent. At the end of this round, in fact, we will remind everybody just how capable Alvarez is with that right hand. Joe Smith Jr. looking for one of his own. So. Hear that thud from the Long Island native. Stop. End of one. Let's take you back to January 18th, start of this year when Alvarez was in against Michael Seals. This was in the seventh round. See ya. Massive right hand finished it. Tu le fais manquer souvent, mais on, il faut le contre-attaque avec ça, OK? On bloque ou on le fait manquer et le coup de poing, et le contre-attaque. Tu fais manquer, bang, tout de suite. En contre ah, non, ça prend la contre-attaque, il faut briser la bague. On va chambre. The fight was originally scheduled for July 16th, but Alvarez was dealing with an injury to his right shoulder. The inflammation subsided. Here we are. A month later, Joe Smith coming out to meet him on the other side of the ring. Applying pressure, short right hand trying to get around. Joe, you want Elader Alvarez to remain who he is, 
he's got a temperament like a cobra. He's a guy who lays in the grass, he lays in the in the weight, and then all of a sudden he'll explode with that right hand. His right hand has a mind of its own. But all I'm asking for from Elater is just more energy. And we've been seeing that so far in this fight. Just a guy who's alert and he's getting combinations off, still being his normal self, but not just letting a guy pile up points and beat on him in hopes that he'll land a big shot late in the fight. Well, right now, Smith Jr. is standing right in front, landing his combinations, which is good, but the fact that he just stands there and admires his work after him, guess what? That's going to give no, 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 uh, Alvarez no, no, no. a chance to land something coming back for counters. Stop, stop. You're going to see a lot of holding and grabbing from Alvarez, especially in the inside because he likes to have his distance. He likes to be out in range and extend with those arms. A lot of head hunting from Smith. Not a lot of body shots coming from him. Good work right now from Joe Smith Jr. A lot of that stuff is being blocked, Tess. You know, like, ooh, that's the right hand right there. Wow. Nice clean right hand landed by Alvarez. Kind of buzz Smith a little bit. And he fires off two more, looks for it again. The reason why Alvarez can get that shot off so quick and he shocks a lot of guys, and, and it's a right hand that can put your lights out, as we saw in those highlights is because he's always watching. Even when Joe Smith is getting punches off, Alvarez may get hit with some of those shots, but his eyes are always on the target and he's always looking for a shot. Keep an eye on that. Like right there, as soon as that threshold is crossed. And Tess, what did he do? What did Alvarez do? Because he has the amateur experience. He got his head off the line when he threw that right hand. Put all of his, all of his weight behind that right hand. Smith Jr. letting them fly here in the final moments of round number two. 175 pound title eliminator. Mark Kriegel, let's discuss the landscape at light heavyweight. Well, any question about the landscape begins with the king of the land, Archer Betrebiev. He fights September 25th in Russia. Fan Long Meng had his, his uh, opponent for the what was the mandatory had visa COVID issues what else was new so the fight is now with Adam Dinas a southpaw out of Germany 19 one and one 10 knockouts number six in the IBF the other half of this WBO eliminator Umar Salamov and Maxim Vlasov was supposed to be the co-feature tonight but it's in limbo guess what COVID visa issues uh, both fighters are in Russia Conceivably, if that fight can't get made, you could be looking at an interim champ or, or uh, who knows, a sort of de facto champ t tonight. You know, Round three to I this point, Joe Smith that. Jr. has a 29 to 16 connect advantage. Test what I was going to say was is that you know, those right hands that Alvarez is trying to set up, like that, right there. You know, Smith needs to be careful. I mean, Smith has gotten his jaw broken not once, but twice in fights. It can happen again, Tess. Hands free, hands free. Stop, stop, stop. Bernardo, you checked in with Jerry Capabianco, listened into what he was saying to Joe Smith. What can you offer? He said, look, I see what a later Alvarez is trying to do. He's trying to come over that with that right hand over our jab. So what Joe has to do is lean over, tuck his chin in, and if he can do that, I believe that he can continue to overpower him, but he's got to do it balanced. He's got to go behind the jab and not get desperate.
And that's one thing I notice about Smith Jr. is he has really good balance. You know, he doesn't always, he doesn't never seem like he's off balance to me. He's always in good position to land his power shots. A very strong, solid guy. Stop, 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 stop. He's relied on power throughout his career. You can constantly hear Capobianco ask him to double up that jab. Everything, a point of emphasis, he's charging him with constantly from the corner is dealing with the jab. Since he got that natural strength. That natural, natural strength. You know, he's in construction, working construction. You know, those guys, they lift everything up. Those guys are strong, physically strong. Also operates a tree service company with his father. Mm. See, Joe Smith just being Joe Smith, volume, pressing the issue, not really concerned about any punches coming back from Alvarez. He's going to live or die with that style. And we see Alvarez being who he is, very economical, looking for the one big shot, trying to snipe Smith with a shot that can shock him and possibly knock him out. The question is whose style and whose temperament is going to win out tonight. As we come to the end of three, I want to show you one of the highlights from our undercard earlier today because it was the pro debut of Duke Reagan. Duke Reagan, who had targets on Olympic fame, decided to sign with top rank, turn pro, and he made his pro debut against Louis Alvarado. And the one-two with the right hand right on the chin in the first round scored this knockout victory. Duke Reagan, who has Kay Karoma working his corner, a very promising, good-looking featherweight prospect. Right back to the jab from Joe Smith Jr. Round four. So Joe Smith Jr. has a lot of volume. And I'm not surprised that he's landing. You know, if Alvarez, if he counterpunched a little bit more, he'll be able to slow down the rhythm of Smith Jr. Let's check in with Bernardo. Mark Ramsey told me that the fight was a lot more physical stop, than he stop. expected early on. And but no, now Let he sees, especially in the last round, that when a later Alvarez backs up Joe Smith, that's not where he wants to be. So you can expect a later to start to pick up the pressure here a little bit more. Well, I hope Alvarez knows that in order to back up Joe Smith, he's got to go through some fire. I mean, Joe Smith is not just going to allow him to back him up without any resistance. So just understand that if you're a later Alvarez. But again, I don't think that's Alvarez's temperament. He wants to lay back. He wants to watch. He wants to look and hope that he can catch Joe Smith slipping and land a big shot over the top, preferably a right hand. Smith landed a right hand over the top of the... The jab of Alvarez. Seemed to buzz him for a split second. And I respect the patience of Alvarez. I mean, I, I can't relate personally, fighter to fighter. I mean, I was a guy who wanted to win every second of every round. I wasn't okay with guys landing four and five shots on me in a combination. But Alvarez, he's just okay with just sitting back and, and trusting and believing that he's going to land the big shot. And he got to drop some buns in the oven, man. He needs to go downstairs. And I'm talking about Alvarez. That's how you slow down a pressure fighter. That's one way to slow him down. Drop some down to the oven. There you go. 
And you're going to see how Smith Jr. reacts. Did you say buns in the oven, Timmy? Put some buns down there, man. <laughs> <laughs> See some blood coming from the nose of the later Alvarez. When you're in that ring and you and that blood starts dripping down, you tend to want to blow it, blow your nose. Don't do that. Your eyes will swell up. You just got to let it drip out. Short left hand at the end of four. Let's show you what happened earlier today in Essex, England, in a significant heavyweight fight between 40-year-old Alexander Povetkin and Dillian White, who is the number one contender in the WBC, who has been saying, when do I get my shot? Well, he put down Povetkin twice in the fourth round. Short left uppercut, but in the fifth round, Possibly the knockout of the year and a stunning upset. Watch this. Pavetkin absolutely ruins Dillian White. He was out before he hit the canvas. And just like that, all of Dillian White's hope to eventually fight the winner of Fury Wilder 3 is gone. Now he'll have to rebuild himself, get the rematch against Povetkin. And at 40 years old, Alexander Povetkin pulls off that. We've said it before, we will say it again. When it is big boys in the ring, anything can happen. Tonight, it happened. Let's go, let's go. Here we go, here we go. Got it. Okay, here we go. Time in, let's go. Started the round without the mouthpiece. Have to have that. <laughs> Dre, what was your reaction to that Pavetkin knockout? I mean, first and foremost, I, I just feel bad for Dylan White. I mean, this is a guy who had been the number one contender for a world title shot, his second opportunity at a title for a long time. And they, they continued to tell him as promoter, the WBC, wait, it's coming next. It's coming next. Just be patient. And next the next fight never really came the opportunity never manifested uh as far as the shot itself great shot from Povetkin in that moment right there what you just saw was probably my biggest concern and my biggest fear as a fighter was getting iced getting knocked out by a shot that I never saw Smith Jr. looking for that right uppercut And, Joe, I've heard stories of fighters who have literally woken up in the ring and felt like they won in their corner saying, listen, man, you got knocked out. And they're in disbelief. I never saying. wanted to be a part of that. I never wanted my family to have to go through that. And thank God it never happened. But Dylan White's got some, he's got some rebuilding to do, not physically, but psychologically. There's that chopping right hand from Alvarez. can hear Capabianco saying, don't walk straight in, Joey. So he just stepped right to Alvarez that time. Now you see Alvarez being a little bit more intentional. You see the blood right there. That's what happens when you let a decent puncher, a strong puncher, like Joe Smith hit you like that. Alvarez will have moments where he wakes up. He better wake up and get going because he's 36 and if he loses this fight he may not get another shot see these offensive waves from smith jr there was a right hand between punches from alvarez while smith was on the attack good stuff here in round five between these two he's hurt right now he's hurt right now just the sheer strength and the, just the work rate of smith is causing oh there's a left hand that sweeps in Ooh. And now a right hand gets around the corner. Look at the he's thudding hurt. blows from Joe Smith Jr. as he's on the attack here in round five. Uppercut reigns in as he backs stop, stop. up Alvarez. Blood continues to pour from Alvarez's nose. Just missed with that right hand. And you can hear Capabianco saying, stop, don't stop, stop, load stop. up, do not load up. Alvarez clearly damaged in that final minute of round five. Joe Smith Jr. in that fifth round, landing 23 power punches. 
pas de glace en fait. Elle est bonne. Le gars, Her. Est trop. OK. Le gars est en train de dépenser beaucoup d'énergie. OK? Il a, a pas encore beaucoup de rondes. Bon, il y a possibilité qu'on revienne dans ce combat-là, mais ça prend la bonne défensive. Si tu ne lèves pas les mains, c'est impossible. Si tu ne lèves pas les mains, on va être obligé d'arrêter le combat. Ça me prend la bonne défensive. Avec la bonne défensive, on va l'amener dans les rondes plus tard. On va pouvoir aller avec les, les power, OK? Mais j'ai besoin absolument de la bonne défensive. Cut, cause by punch. Hein? Cut, cause by punch. Let's go, let's go. Joe Smith Jr. was 29 of 71, landed 29 connects in that fifth round. Stop, stop. Alvarez can't continue to take those type of punches, those big shots coming from Smith. Well, this fight's not going to continue. Those some big shots that landed in the back end of that last round. 302 punches thrown by Smith Jr. to just 191 for the more economical Alvarez. Hey, that's the thing, Chess. You can get busy. You can get busy on a counter puncher. That's what Smith is doing. So But the, the plus for Smith is he has heavy hands. That's the plus. Not only does he have volume, but he also has punching power you have to deal with. If you're a later Alvarez, and this is, your, you know, potentially your last shot, he's got to be thinking about that, being 36 years of age. Go down fighting. If you get caught with a shot and you get knocked out, at least you went down throwing both hands, and you're a puncher, so you have a great chance of landing a big shot on the temple or the chin of Joe Smith. But just to sit back and take a beating and go away passively, I'm just not a fan of that. And very much it seemed like it was top of mind when we talked with him this week about his age, about this being the last big opportunity, and regrets that he has about the rematch against Kovalev. He said, I was this close to a mega deal with top rank. If I had just secured and won that rematch, Listen to me, Smith Jr. is tough. If a later Alvarez is hoping he's going to land one shot and knock him out, oh, be my guest. Because let me tell you, this is a man that fought with a ten, or eight rounds with a broken jaw and also been in the ring with Bivol that has dynamite in both hands and went the distance with Bivol. It, it's not about toughness. If, if any fighter gets hit in the right spot, they can be as tough as they want to be. They can still be looking up at the lights like we so, just saw from Dylan White. Tough tough contender who's fought everybody, who's willing to fight everybody. He didn't have an opportunity to be tough. He got caught and the fight was over. Same thing can happen to Smith. Well, you know what I say, Dre? If you're on your back and you can look up, that means you can get up. Stop. At this moment, the only way that I see Alvarez winning this fight is getting lucky with a shot. Smith is going to continue to come forward and press forward. He believes tonight, gentlemen. Ladies stop, stop. and gentlemen, I should say. Stop, stop. That's all you come to do is put Vaseline on and get my mouthpiece in before the bell rings. Adam Hurt in the fifth. Stop, stop, stop. When he landed 28 power punches. Right now a 92 to 64 connect advantage according to CompuBox. 
Start of round number seven. Let's look at Andre's scorecard as it stands right now. A sweep for Joe Smith Jr. Perez looking the time that left hand. In the words of the late Nazim Richardson, the great trainer out of Philadelphia. Sup, sup. Son, I hear what you're saying, but I'm too busy watching what you're doing. <laughs> That's what I felt like when Alvarez was in our fighting meeting yesterday. He said all the right things. Yeah. Good guy to root for. It. Great story. But you've always seen this kind of elater in fights. A guy, even the fights that he won, the first fight with Kovalev, he came from behind to win that. He wasn't dominating every round. I just didn't believe he was going to turn over a new leaf. He's proven me right tonight. Yeah, in that first fight, he was cut in the sixth round. Kovalev was ahead on all the scorecards. And then the Stop power that. surge came in the seventh round when he scored the three knockdowns to become a light heavyweight world champion. Bernardo, what is Mark Ramsey saying about what's going on here? He says, look, Joe Smith has spent a lot of energy. We have to improve our defense, but more importantly, we have to throw real power punches to slow him down. The only way to win this fight is to hurt this guy. Yeah, keep him off him and do some damage yourself. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. Smith Jr., to me, is not going anywhere. <laughs> Come on. Alvarez shoulder to shoulder stop, with stop, him stop. now. Come on, stop. See that blood continuing as well as swelling around that nose. He's been taking a step back and taking deep breaths. There's a right hand from Alvarez. Oh, there it is. Right hand from Alvarez here with a minute to go in the seventh round. A little buckle of the legs of Joe Smith. Looking for it again, trying that to That happens that when right you get hand. complacent. That happens when you get complacent, Tess. When you have success and then you get comfortable and then you leave yourself wide open for a right hand like that. And then look at what Joe Smith does to respond. Stop, stop. I think the only reason why that happened is because Joe Smith took his foot off the gas. Yep. He wanted to rest, and Alvarez felt like he could throw that kind of shot, and that's why it landed. But when Joe Smith is being Joe Smith, when he's letting his hands go, Alvarez wants no part of it. You can see the power from Smith just mauling him here again at the end of the seventh. And now letting his hands go. Nice. So a nice way to respond after the right hand from Alvarez, how Smith came down the stretch there of round seven. Right on the temple. The right hand of Alvarez has a mind of its own. It's just, it's a natural thing when a guy is coming in yeah. and he has a low left hand like we saw right there from Joe Smith, he just whips it around. Doesn't even really turn his waist, he just whips it around and he's just naturally got a lot of power on that shot. That buckled Joe Smith, but obviously it didn't put him down. But if you got that kind of power, why not increase your chance of a knockout by throwing more? If I'm in the corner of Alvarez, that's what I'm screaming. Young fighters, real quick. You saw that sequence right there. Why did Smith Jr. get hit with that overhand right? Let me tell you why he got hit. He threw the jab from a little bit too close and let the right hand come right over the top. I got to you know, tell you right now. Throwing the jab is great, but you got to make sure you do it at the right distance. Tim, I am stunned that Tony Weeks, the referee, is not asking for time here to start the eighth based on how much grease was applied onto the face <laughs> of a later Alvarez. I mean, he's coming out. Oh, if he continues to fight like this, Tess, if he continues to fight like this, he's going to get knocked out. Now the right hand going to get Smith knocked Jr. off anyway. That's that. But that is a lot of grease. Wow, look at his face. <laughs> I mean, look at that. This is how he walked Fine. out to start the round. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, that's bad. Well, you see what direction Tony Weeks is looking. He, he, he didn't catch it. They slipped that one through. I'm, yeah, I've never seen all, it was like all over his face. It, it, you know, sometimes you see it 
either over an eye, you know. Yeah, big glob of petroleum jelly on a cut. I get it. Yeah. 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 Listen, <laughs> trainers and cut <laughs> men, they're going to try to stretch the rules. It's not their job. I mean, obviously, they want to stay within the rules, but they're going to try to push the, the envelope with things like that. It's yeah. the referee's job to catch that. I think the Martians on Mars seen that, all that crease. Stop, stop. Let me tell you that, man. <laughs> that was a lot of grease, man. Anyhow. Long Island's Joe Smith Jr. trying to close in on a world championship. This is a title eliminator. Alvarez is sitting on another right hand. He's waiting. He's waiting on Smith Jr. to throw a jab from a little bit too close. He's trying to dial it in. Stop. Squared up, and he threw the right hand. You know what I like? It, what I like with Smith when he changes the speed up with his combinations. I like that. He has a lot of success when he changes the speed up. Instead of just one, two, one, two, when he puts them in combinations in a quicker, quicker sequence. Very good night to this point for Joe Smith Jr. Got to Alvarez in the fifth round. Take us through it. It's been Joe Smith Jr. from the opening bell, even until now, combinations, pressure. Like I told you in the beginning, you know, you got a counter puncher in front of you, if you got your volume going, if you're letting your hands go, he can sit and block as many or try to block as many shots as you possibly can. Something's going to get in there. Great job by Smith Jr. See the total punches, a 132 to 79 connect advantage. Four more rounds. Don't get lazy. Watch your jab. Short shots when you close the distance. Let's go. Message couldn't be clearer. Four rounds to yep. go. Don't get lazy. Stick with yes. the plan. In addition to the total punches that we showed you and that advantage he had, when it comes to power punches, Smith Jr. has a 122 to 51 power punch connect advantage. There's a right lead, and then he sends him through the ropes Test. to start Four. round Test. nine. Five, six, seven. Eight, Alvarez has nine. to make his That's way it. back it's through the right. ropes, and this fight is over. Joe Smith Jr. raised that it. hand. That was a statement right there. Exclamation point right there. A statement by Joe Smith Jr. Test. He wow. earned it every which way from start to finish and then close the show at the beginning of round nine. The thudding power of Joe Smith Jr. delivers in Vegas. Tess, it started with a spit, like a shotgun jab. He landed a shotgun jab that hurt a later Alvarez, and then he followed up there. He, he actually saw him hurt, and then he followed up with combinations and landed a nice, crisp right hand to end this match. Wow. <laughs> what a celebration for Jerry and Phil Capabianco, who have been with Joe Smith Jr. for so long. In fact, he told us last night, Dre, he said, it was Jerry who said to me very early on, you're going to be a world champion. I just trusted in his plan. I didn't believe in myself necessarily at the time, but I trusted in his plan. Now he's going to get another <laughs> chance to fight wow. for a world championship belt. <laughs> Yes, he is. He'll get he'll get his he'll get his second opportunity. And you know, it's beautiful when things work out according to plan. There's a lot of things that can happen in a professional boxing career, but he's right in line to get that second shot. Just a beautiful shot. I mean, 
Joe Smith has been chopping at the tree all night long. That was probably the straightest, clearest shot that he threw to the chin of Alvarez right there. He didn't load up. He just let it go. And because Alvarez is sitting right in front of Joe Smith and hasn't really posed much of an offensive, you know, problem for Smith, Smith felt like he could throw that kind of shot. And then later he's been taking punishment all night. That shot may not have knocked Alvarez out in the first round or the first couple rounds. But when you beat on a tree, you hit it in that sweet spot right at that, that moment, then the tree falls down. And that tree is Elater Alvarez. You said it, Dre. Straight right, as straight as right hand he threw all night long. Yes, he did. He disguised that right hand with that jab. Disguised it. Came straight down the middle. And later, Alvarez never saw that punch coming. That's why it hurt him, ladies and gentlemen. But at the same time, it was a jab beforehand. Both guys came to the center of the ring at the start of that round. And both guys landed a solid jab. And you saw, I saw the reaction from a later. He bagged up. And that's when Smith Jr. came forward and landed the kill shot to end this match. Excellent evening for Joe Smith Jr. And what a way to close it. Let's make it official with Mark Chinook. Ladies and gentlemen, here inside the MGM Grand Reverie, Tony Weeks calls a stop to this bout at 26 seconds of round number nine. Declaring your winner by technical knockout, Joe the Beast Smith. Junior. He landed 135 punches in that fight. 125 of them were power punches, Dre, including that beautiful straight right to the chin. Your final thoughts on Joe Smith Jr.'s performance.